hope you're just tuning in. <laughs> our conversation tonight is to understand our rights as citizens. What Dele has told me, I'm not a citizen. I'm an indigenous. Yep. And how we can exercise those rights. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. But please, let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at wayshowafrica one with the hashtag wayshow. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 right, so Tammy, um, let me come to you. You've not, we've not heard you in a minute. All right, thank you for um, thank you, Ua. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Farati, for joining us. Uh, you were Pleasure. speaking a lot about the constitution being amended and that being like a fundamental issue that needs to be dealt with. But you know, my question is about how that you know, I'm sure that there are areas in the constitution that you do not agree with and you think it needs to be reviewed. And apparently, from what you said, um, even the process of coming up with the constitution. But, you know, when we look at um, the Constitution in itself, or even other laws, would you say that the challenge is the laws or the implementation? Because it seems that we have a lot of laws in Nigeria, and it seems that the issue is actually implementation, like the criminal code, like all of these laws for different states, you know, the federal laws, all of these laws, and even the Constitution, which you, you say should be amended in itself. You know, it does provide even for fundamental human rights, at least, and, you know, I'm just thinking to myself that is the issue really about the Constitution being reviewed? If we go back to review the Constitution, would there be any difference at all? Or would we just be coming back to the issue of implementation? What's your thoughts okay. on this? Thank you for the question, Timmy. Let me first of all say this to you. I have never advocated for the amendment of that fraudulent 1999 Constitution. You cannot build on a lie. I have simply called for its complete abrogation. There is nothing called amendment. That constitution is incurably fraudulent. Mm -hmm. It is incurably fraudulent. And I can say this without any doubt or shadow of no argument. And I would explain myself. The last time the Nigerian people sat down to ever agree on how they should be governed, it was a process that lasted years. The culmination was the 1963 Republican Constitution. It set out the way Nigerians wished to be governed, how the place called Nigeria should be run. It was very fundamental in its... It, 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 the fundamentals were clear. One of them was that it should be a federation. A federation... I think we're having trouble with his um, with his audio. Timmy, are you there? Okay, I think both both both, both. challenges. Mm -hmm. So, um, Uti, where do we start this conversation from? You it's... know, like okay. So, for me, the level of, you know, the level of impunity mm. in this country that you see some of our leaders exhibiting, you'll be wondering like, so now give, this gives me actually that clarity that he was talking about, mm -hmm. where the real problem is. They're yeah. just looking at you, you don't exist. Well, that's it now. <laughs> you you know, do not I, exist. I keep saying it all the time that huh. my favorite picture of the president is, is that one that is used in so many memes with the toothpick mm. because the look on his face is just the one that says it all. Like, um, I'm trying to, what's that term? What's that Igbo phrase? Just no good. So you just feel like, you know, just look at these people. Mm. Just like, what, what, what exactly is going on here? And you find that it's everywhere. And this is where sometimes I say that it's not just about our, the political elite, the, you know, the top politicians. It's everyone that has any seat of power. Mm -hmm. Just like the police, just like, you know, public servants, wherever you find this impunity is just, it's all, like, it's in everybody. It's just, it's soaked into, into our very core. I tell you. And, you know, I start to ask myself, everybody, you know, and this is, sometimes, you, you know, I like to ask myself the very hard questions. Everybody's just waiting for their opportunity to get there. The percentage of Nigerians who are not waiting for that opportunity to carry out their own impunity... Yeah, insignificant. I mean, Tedu Babyface was, was on the show on Monday, mm -hmm. and he was saying that his mates, he's 42, mm. that he knows some of his mates that have entered into politics and they are chopping. He said the truth is that even he himself, 
if he gets into politics, he's going to chop. Because yeah. he said, even if he doesn't chop, you will call him and say, come on. Is it, is it in your own time that you want to? Eat? Because that mm -hmm. is, we have so accepted that yeah. culture that it is even almost it's ingrained. It, I'm telling you, it's, it's almost impossible yeah. for us to even see that these things would actually change because everybody's just used to it. And the systems that are supposed to check yeah. these things, they don't exist. They don't exist. The churches don't exist. <laughs> no, you know, true. I mean, they, they don't. The, 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 the very, the real, the real, let's say the realest reality. <laughs> the very real reality for me is the fact that a whole generation has been born into this. Mm -hmm. They have no concept of what good leadership should look like. They have no concept of what proper governance should be. It, it, like, I mean, it, it's like the lost years. Mm -hmm. They've not seen it. Absolutely. And when you haven't seen it, and I, you know, I keep saying, you can't give what you don't have. Absolutely. But one day I sat down and I was thinking about it and I said, you, see, you always say this, you can't give what you don't have. But then they don't have it because they've never seen it. Mm. So when you say that, it's almost like you're on your high horse saying something. Oh, <laughs> you know. Okay, I think I, we, have, uh, we have our guests back. Well, let me take some comments. Uti, take some comments as well. Okay. Nothing will happen to... Uh, okay, I think this is a continuation. Um, take the comments you have. You okay. know. So it says, in the past few days, there have been threats to um, Dele Faratimi's life. He has asked for police protection. Hope he has police protection now. Um, the next one is from Ufuma, and that says, on today's topic, I think the issue of rights have been eroded over time and impunity gaining ground in leaps and bounds. It's so bad, it's now transgenerational. Mm -hmm. um, and that is why it is going to be hard to correct. Sometimes I have thought, sometimes I have thought what would happen if Nigerians petition UN to have the UK recolonize Nigeria for 100 years, hmm. to whip us back in line, change our rotation over at least two or three generations. They administer this, the state and its resources on behalf of the citizens. I think the British left too early, and that is part of our problem. We are a premature nation at independence amongst the Committee of Nations, and it's plaguing us to date, coupled with are petty into tribal bickerings. I bet you I think, disagree, though. But I think that this has just said it in, in all. Yeah. I even think that um, one thing with Nigerians, and I, again, this is why sometimes I, I've said on the show that I don't think democracy is for us. I don't even think I don't mm. think it will take a hundred years let to whip us into shape. Let me let me bring it, Dele. Does, does he agree that we can be whipped into shape by bringing back the? I don't think I don't believe that. <laughs> we we, we lost it for a second. The colonizers, but we need a strong hand. You know. Yeah, we try our best to live in the new age, but mm. our infrastructure always reminds us that we are still in the fourth world. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah, fourth world. So it happens. We lost the connection for a few there. Yeah. So yeah. The problem of Nigeria, the problem of Nigeria is not unresolvable. When people now begin to bring these simple ideas, very simple ideas, uh, break it up. When they are done with suggesting that we break it up, although they rarely ever explain how this is meant to happen in this current climate of insanity, mm -hmm. peacefully, then the next thing they will talk about is, okay, we bring the British back to come and rule us. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't have brains. Mm -hmm. I do agree. In this, amongst us, we have Nigerians occupying some of the loftiest positions of authority the in the world mm -hmm. and doing fantastically well without becoming fantastically corrupt. But because our rulers or ruiners have fantastically ruined Nigeria, you begin to hear such simple ideas as let's hand it over to the British. They should rule us for two generations. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Please, There's a comment here. We should here. not even dignify those kinds of ideas with any discussion of any sort, if I, the truth be told. I tell you. So sadly, the watchdogs institutions have become toothless police justice system and the executive which one really works without personal contribution to get to uh, to work please what are the rights slash benefits of an indigene in nigeria since we are not citizens <laughs> and he says how are we sure if impunity is not in our dna i know we don't have a long time but tell me hold on let me finish the comment he, he tell me can you All hear right, me? but just to remind you that he was going to talk about the uh, constitutional annulment and he was talking about it already yes. before it was determined. Yes. Oh, thank you for bringing us back there. But I just, I just saw this question and I thought to also add that to it. So what is the right and benefit of an indigene in Nigeria? And how are we sure that if impunity is not in our DNA? So you add that. <laughs> okay, first thing first, let me deal with the question Temi has been asking. 
And that's the question of how do we change our situation? Mm -hmm. Look, the first thing that we must all understand is this. The human capacity for reasonable resolution of challenges are abundant in Nigeria. We are thinkers. We can think our way out of problems. My very first book, Do Not Die in Their War, has a 59-page draft constitution attached to it. I wouldn't be the first person to sit down to suggest a different path. There have been several attempts by more intelligent and better behaved persons, temperate human beings, the patriots, all kinds of Nigerian conglomerations have sat down together to come up with different ideas as to how we could walk away from that fraudulent 1999 constitution. Mm -hmm. But what has happened is that the beneficiaries of that constitution, those occupying offices today, they do not want to see their names to the gravy train from where they all fit. Mm. So they are insisting that, okay, even if this process must happen, it must come through what they now call the lawful channels, which is the National Assembly, which mm. is a conglomeration of crooks mm -hmm. again. The same bunch of crooks that brought us to this point are the ones that are sat mm. in that place. They are not people who have, they are not expressions of our will. So... Here is the one that most people don't like hearing. Nigeria is at a junction. There are two choices for Nigeria. The first is what is already staring us in the face, facilitated by those who have brought us to this junction. There's a civil war staring us all in the face. Some idiots are already blockading through food supplies. All it takes is another idiot in the South retaliating in time. In, in time. And then you have a tit for tat idiocy escalating. is already happening. Everywhere you turn in Nigeria, there are already too many guns in the wrong hands. Hmm. The government is not the one in charge. The government is busy negotiating with bandits Terrorists. as if they are partners in progress. So you begin to understand very quickly that we are already on the road to Mogadishu. The alternative for us is a revolution. People tend to hear the word revolution and they begin to shake because they are thinking you are speaking to violence. I have never been a violent man in my life. But revolution talks about turning around, changing things. That is the meaning of the word revolving, mm. turn around. Nigeria needs to turn around and it needs to do so urgently. If it's going to turn around and turn around urgently, it has to do so on the basis of a plan or a platform to which you have mobilized, behind which you have mobilized the Nigerian people. The second book I have written, which has just been given to my editor, is tentatively titled The Imperatives of the Nigerian Revolution. What it does is to set out the non-violent path to the achievement of the ideas that I had set out in relation to that constitution or any other one behind which we might be able to mobilize the Nigerian people. But every Nigerian of conscience, North, East, West, and South, wherever they be found, whether in the diaspora, or here in Nigeria, must understand very clearly that there is an urgent need for them to start speaking to the need to change the trajectories of Nigeria. Because those in power appear to be more interested in setting the house on fire in mm. order to cover their crimes. Mm. Those who are interested in genuine change should stop all these answers. Answers was a good place to start. But our struggle is not about SARS. It's about a demand for citizenship. That demand for citizenship would see the end of the 1999 constitution. It cannot stand in the face of citizenship. Hmm. So yes, we are indigents. And indigents have only the rights that their overlord says they have. I believe it was Uwa who was talking earlier on, and she spoke about how the Nigerian is seen as a troublemaker when he, when. He, Demands is right. That's Uti. Yeah. Look at my brother Yele. Mm -hmm. Ye Yele Shoure is constantly in trouble with the Nigerian state because he has never learned how to keep his head down like an obedient slave. Mm. All he has ever done is demand his rights as a citizen. But because citizenship rights are incongruous and inconsistent with the Nigerian state and his rulers, he constantly robs them the wrong way. 
because he refused to bow his head. Absolutely. If you want to live successfully in Nigeria, you have to learn to live reflexively, almost like you have accepted servitude. Hmm. When the policeman says, hey, holy, you say yes, sir. Hmm. That way he's happy hmm. because he's a representative of the oppressive state. Hmm. When the civil servant says, may I bring your fire? He says, oh, thank you, madam. You had something under the fire. So that he understands that, that you recognize the oppressive state that they represent. Hmm. So Nigeria is a system of oppression because you are not citizens. Hmm. So, okay, so we have like barely five minutes to go. Uti, quickly. So I just, I mean, I'm, I'm very intrigued oh. by this um, concept that you've just spoken up uh, about in your book, about peaceful revolution. I wonder if you could just take a quick minute to tell us how, because in my mind, I can't see how a revolution is peaceful. I so maybe you. just give us some insights into your thoughts around that. It is a simple enough thing, my sister. In the years of Abacha, I was old enough to see what we became. In Abacha's year, we mobilized ourselves enough to the point where you could actually speak creditably to the Nigerian people and say, you know what, please, we are staying at home for the next three days. So you call a sit at home protest. That way you don't present anyone on the streets for SARS to shoot. There is nobody for soldiers to do target practice with. Hmm. Now, how do you get to that point? You do the grunge work. You do what I have been doing for almost a year. You talk to people. You let them see that you are advocating for genuine change without looking to feather your own nest. When people know that you are for real and that what you are advocating is achievable and is not sectional, is a, is a national thing, is not you trying to project the interest of Yoruba above the Fulani or above the Ipo, but it is something for everybody. Look, Nigeria will not be saved until we have learned to unite ourselves and to close the gaps that our rulers have created in order to keep us divided. Absolutely. Because it is in our division that they are able to control us. The, yeah. the Nigerian rulers are united. They are one. Their wives shop together. Their children marry each other. Hmm. But the poor... They are taught to hate each other. Absolutely. We have to unite them. Let them understand the commonalities of their affliction. Mm -hmm. See that they are not each other's problem. It is the rulers that are our common problems. Mm -hmm. It is only when we have united the people that we can then stand behind the common platform to demand citizenship together. Absolutely. People speak of the Fulani as though the Fulani is the problem of Nigeria. The people being kidnapped in Katsina, are they Igbo? Or are they from my village in, in, in Imesili? These are Fulani people. Most of the people being kidnapped in Zamfara, they are also Fulanis. So when people say they are blockading us, they are not bringing food to the south, who are the people being kidnapped in the north? Hmm. When we speak here, we are speaking for them, but we are speaking above their heads. We need to move from to the down. next stage yeah. where we speak to the bridging of the, dif the different gaps and divisions that have been created amongst us. Wow. We've run out of time. But, Temi, you have we a final comment. We vote on anybody's behalf. Absolutely. Temi, is Temi there? Yes. Well, yeah, you have you. a comment with you quickly. Yeah, so there's a comment from... Tony, Tony is writing from Germany. She says, Ogadele has said it all. Nigeria is not working for Nigerians. I promise you the National Assembly is not ready to do a thing about the Constitution. That's Tony writing from Germany. So in the bid to fight this impunity that we see with our government, that every single time we try to stand up to even some semblance of what our rights are, to stand up to those rights, you know, and we see them consistently, you know, almost like suppressing, uh, you know, um, the Nigerian youth. What would be your counsel? You know, because that question about indi indi indigenous, at least since we're not citizens, we should know what our indigenous rights are, you know. So what would be your counsel, you know, to the young people? Oh, you see, what I have found with your generation is that you really don't need anybody's counsel. What you might require sometimes might be direction 
and clarity. Mm. Um, I saw courage in your generation that I found rather rare and uncommon. And when people have been pushed as much as your generation has been pushed, one has to also be careful that in interventions, what one is offering are pathways. Because anger is not an alternative to insanity. Mm. If I stoke anger, all that will happen is that one will become a rabble rouser and you get people to go onto the streets and go and get killed by a state that is framed by impunity in all of its dealings with its so-called citizens. So what I will say to all of you is this. Speak to the unity hmm. of Nigeria. Absolutely. Not the unity of the oppression. The hmm. unity of the idea of a Nigerian state where there are citizens who are all equal underneath and before the law. Speak to that and then make sure that you don't react. Stop reacting. Respond. When they do their things that they do as they are always doing it, your generation has proven itself particularly adept at recognizing the evil, even though you are beginning just now to understand the nature of that evil. Mm. But remain as dogged as you've been. I've, uh, I have a lot of respect for your generation, and I'm sure you'll figure it out. We'll do our best to offer some guidance Absolutely. as much as we can. But I have no doubt the kids will do good. They're already doing better than us. Thank you so much, Delifaro, to me. It means that you're going to keep coming since you are, you are available to keep on uh, helping us and guiding us. <laughs> we hope to bring I you back. I wouldn't pass up the opportunity to... I wouldn't pass up the opportunity to come out and enjoy the sound of my own voice in the company of such beautiful ladies. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. We had a fantastic, a we fantastic, eye-opening conversation with you tonight. It was really insightful. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Tammy. Yeah. Thank you, Uti. All right, so Ways was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, influence life towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. If you're a job seeker, keep watching Ways and follow us on all our social media handles as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell a friend to keep all eyes on Ways. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Without strong watchdog institutions, impunity becomes the very foundation upon which systems of corruptions are, uh, corruption are built. All right, so we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.